बिस्मिल्लाम अस्सलाम वालेकुम स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द लेक्चर ऑफ द जनरल एम्बोलॉजी एंड दीज ऑल टॉपिक्स व्हिच आर आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू टुडे वी हैव ऑलरेडी रेड बट नॉट सेपरेटली विद इन द अदर टॉपिक्स आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन देम सेपरेटली mostly from these topics in the question paper we have short notes of two marks or three marks or maybe of if a question of five marks the let's start topic is amniotic and umbilical cord and second topic is the amniotic fluid the open line of reflection between the amnion and embryonic ectoderm amnion is the back membrane and embryonic ectoderm is the outer layer of the embryonic germ layer embryonic ectoderm amnio ectoderm junction is the primitive umbilical ring here you can appreciate that this is the primitive umbilical ring that is amnion here you can see that this fetus is present within the amniotic bag this is the amnion and this is in connection with the ectoderm the outer layer of the germ layer so here it will form the amniotic ring uh, <clears throat> primitive umbilical ring so the open line of reflection between the amnion and embryonic ectoderm that is amnio ectoderm junction is the primitive umbilical ring here you can see again that this is the amnion and this is the ectoderm so this at this junction amnion amnion and at this junction it is forming the primitive umbilical ring at the peak week of development the following structures pass through the ring the connecting star containing the allantois and umbilical vessel allantois and umbilical vessel so here you can see these are the umbilical vessel here you can appreciate it and connecting star containing the umbilical vessel and the allantois what is allantois allantois is the extension of the yolk sac into the umbilical cord <coughs> are the connecting star the connecting star here containing the uh, uh, allantois and umbilical vessels and embryonic vessels consist of two arteries and one vein then number 2 is the yolk sac vitelline duct accompanied by the vitelline vessels here you can appreciate this vitelline duct and the vitelline vessels within the umbilical ring number 3 is the canal con connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavities here you can appreciate this the extraembryonic cavity this white color is the extraembryonic cavity this one is the extraembryonic cavity so at the fifth week we have connecting star yolk sac star yolk star vitelline duct and vessels number 3 is the canal containing the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavity so here you can appreciate the connecting star containing the allantois and the umbilical vessels and vitelline duct and the vessels and the canal connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavity 
Within the figure, you can see all the things, vitaline duct and vessels, umbilical vessels, yolk star, and the canal connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic. This white color, white color is the canal connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavity. Here, same thing, umbilical vessel, this is the connecting stock, umbilical vessel. Vitaline duct and vessels, yolk stock, and this is the canal connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavities. During further development, the amniotic cavity enlarges rapidly. This amniotic cavity enlarges rapidly at the expense of the Chorionic cavity. Outer to the uh, amniotic cavity, we have the chorionic cavity. Here you can appreciate that this is the amniotic cavity and this will be the, on outer side, this is the chorionic cavity. And the amnion begins to envelop the connecting and yolk cells start folding them together and giving rise to the primitive umbilical cord as we already read just now. Distilling the cord contains the yolk cell stock and umbilical vessels. More proximally, it contains some intestinal loops and remnant of the allantois. Yolk cell formed in the chorionic cavity is connected to the umbilical cord by its stock. At the end of the third month, the amnion has expanded so that it comes in contact with the chorion, obliterating the chorionic cavity. The yolk sac then usually shrinks and is gradually obliterated. So we can see on this that this is the chorionic cavity. This is the amniotic, amniotic cavity. Amniotic cavity will expand and will join this chorionic membrane so that there will be no chorionic cavity in future and it will disappear. One point and second point the yolk cell which is allantized <coughs> it will be along with the umbilical vessels it will disappear when there will be the constriction of the or crowding of the connecting star due to the obliteration of the chorionic cavity. Then there will be the disappearance of the yolk sac. So this point yolk sac disappearance, this point that the uh, chorionic cavity disappears, the, these all are explained on this diagram that this is the chorionic cavity, it will enlarge and it will disappear. And this is the connecting star card, the umbilical card, future umbilical card that contains the umbilical vessels, vitaline duct and vessels which will obliterate uh, in future and yolk sac star, yolk sac and star. And this is the canal connecting the intraembryonic and extraembryonic cavity which will also disappear and remains will be the umbilical vessels within the umbilical cord. As the abdominal cavity is temporarily too small for the rapidly developing intestinal loops, so some of the intestinal loops are pushed into the extra embryonic space in the umbilical cord. Ab abdominal cavity is small, so its content that is intestinal loops is pushed into the extra embryonic space which is in the umbilical cord. When some organ is pushed into the other space, then it is called hernia. As you read, 
or you will read uh, in lower limb, the inguinal hernia, femoral hernia, that intestinal loops are going from one place to the other, or from normal place to the abnormal place. As it is occurring in the during development, so it is called physiological umbilical hernia, not pathology. So it is the physiological uh, umbilical hernia that is intestinal loops are pushed into the umbilical cord as the abdominal cavity was very small. At approximately the end of the third month or 12 weeks, the loops are withdrawn into the body of the embryo and the cavity in the cord is obliterated. We have already discussed it that cavity will be obliterated but after the pushing back the abdominal contents into the abdomen. When the elephantize and vitelline duct and its vessels are also obliterated as I have already told you all that remains in the cord are the umbilical vessels. So uh, within the umbilical cord we have only at the end umbilical vessel. When we start the development of the umbilical cord there were so many that is allantize, vitelline duct and vessels, umbilical vessels and the canal connecting the extra embryonic and intra embryonic space. But no, we have only the umbilical vessels surrounded by the jelly of water. Jelly of water is rich in proteoglycan functions as a protective layer for the blood vessel. When child will be born, we will cut the umbilical cord from the placenta and there will be the rapid constriction of the cord due to the contraction of the umbilical vessels after the cord is tied off. So, in the end, within the umbilical cord, we have the umbilical vessels surrounded by the jelly of Wharton, which is rich in proteoglycan. This is all about the umbilical cord that we have the primitive umbilical ring first, and in it we have a number of contents, but in the end, we have only the umbilical vessels surrounded by the jelly of Wharton. Now we start the next topic that is amniotic fluid. Amniotic cavity is filled with a clear water fluid that is produced in part by amniotic cells as the amniotic cavity is formed by the amniotic cells. But primarily it is derived from the amniotic fluid is derived from the maternal blood. The amount of fluid increases from its approximately at the age of 10 weeks of gestation, it is only 30 ml, 20 weeks, 450 ml, and at the age of 37 weeks, it is about 800 to 1000 ml. During the early months of pregnancy, the embryo is suspended by its umbilical cord in this fluid, which serves as a protective cushion. What are the functions of the amniotic fluid? It absorbs jolts. Number two, it prevents adherence of the embryo to the amnion. It absorbs jolts. Number two, it prevents adherence of embryo to the amnion, allows for the fetal movement. So these three are the functions of the amniotic fluid. Volume of amniotic fluid is replaced every three hours. It is replaced 
every three hours from the beginning of the fifth month the fetus swallows its amniotic fluid and it is estimated that it drinks about 400 ml a day drinks about 400 ml a day about half of the total amount fetal urine is added daily to the amniotic fluid in the fifth month but this urine is mostly water since the placenta is functioning as an exchange of metabolic waste during childbirth the amniotic cephalic membrane forms a hydrostatic valve that helps in dilatation of the cervix so this is all about the amniotic fluid that it is produced by the amniotic cells and primarily derived from the maternal blood then its amount and functions that it absorbs jaws prevents the adherence of the embryo to the amniotic and allows for fetal movement and then swallowing of the amniotic fluid and excretion of the amniotic fluid as the urine which is mostly water thank you so much and now the assignment assignment will be uh, roll number 61 62 सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फोर सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी सेवन सिक्सटी एट सिक्सटी नाइन एंड सेवन थैंक यू सो मच अल्लाह हाफिज